you feel like God's going to touch some people in here today. I want to talk to you on a subject uh, today called the same but different. The same but different. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, gosh, that's a lot of adjectives, isn't it? Jeepers. Uh, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to a land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, I have given to you, as I have said to Moses from the wilderness uh, and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites and the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Now, here's the part I want to focus on today. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Now, listen to this. As I was with Moses so will I be with you, the same but different. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Father God, I ask you to make this font bigger so I don't struggle to see my notes today. And God, anoint me to minister your word effectively. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, before I get started, I want to send condolences again to the Maney family and to the Flesher family. Uh, we laid... Uh, uh, Gramps yesterday, Tracy's grandpa, we laid him to rest yesterday, and uh, I was so proud of our church, uh, everybody working together, um, it just, uh, it was absolutely incredible, all the setup, all the tear down, all the clean up, all the food that was brought, thank you so much, you make, you make our church look good, come on somebody, amen. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you the same but different. I want you to understand that greatness starts in a seed. Greatness starts in a seed. That's why it is so important that we finish. That is why it's so important that we finish. Galatians 5, verse number 7, uh, Paul said, You ran well, but who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence you in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. You ran well, but who hindered you? It is important to finish. Can I say this to you, that beginnings always look different than endings. Beginnings always look different than endings. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. I want to talk to you today about the thought, the same but different, and that's an oxymoron, the same. The same means a lot, of, a lot alike, but different means not alike. The same means a lot alike, but different means not much alike at all. Let me dig into this a little bit. Moses has passed away, and now Joshua is privileged to be the pastor of this new desert church of three and a half million people that drove his predecessor crazy. He is the new pastor, and I'll bet he is just thanking God for it every minute of the day. God, in the text that I just read to you, speaking uh, is speaking to Moses' youth director, his Joshua, and God had a lot to say to Joshua, but this one phrase caught my eye with great anticipation in my own life when I began to dig into it, and that is when he said, as I was with you, as I was with Moses, Joshua, I'm going to be with you. The things I did for Moses, Joshua, I'm going to do some of those things for you, as I was with him. And I'm sure Joshua said, but God, he went berserk. He lost his mind in the middle of it all. I love that promise because God did some amazing things through the life of Moses. I would love to have, uh, to have been Moses to see what he saw, uh, but at the same time, I couldn't imagine being the pastor of that particular group of whiners that left Egypt. Sometimes I think I have it bad, and sometimes I think that my job is tough, and then I open my Bible to the book of 
Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the first seven chapters of Joshua. And then I think to myself, thank you, Jesus, that I was not kin to Moses. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Hello. I feel sorry for the man, Moses. I feel really sorry for him. Can you imagine being a convicted felon and standing before Pharaoh as the one who killed one of his guards and telling Pharaoh, God said, let his people go or else? Or else what? I mean, could you, could you imagine, Pharaoh, listen here, you little pipsqueak. I've been looking for you for a long time. You've been hiding on the backside of the desert. Who do you think you are coming in here and barking orders at me? You let them go or else what? Or else, little fella, don't you know who you're standing in front of? You are standing in front of the Supreme Court. Right now, you are in front of the Supreme Court speaking to us, and there's a warrant out for your arrest. Do you have any idea what you are doing? Can you imagine Pharaoh's army behind you? I mean, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I'm thinking about all the promises and all the accolades that it's got to bring to Joshua now that he is so looking forward to this. Can you imagine having an army behind you, the Red Sea in front of you, and you hold your staff up and the wind starts to blow through your hair and the wind starts to, and the waters part and there in front of your eyes you walk across the Red Sea on dry ground. Listen, his church was mad at him when this particular miracle happened. They, they, they uh, were calling him to take them back to the familiarity of Egypt. He's telling them, come and follow me, and I'm going to take you all to a promised land. Wherever, uh, wherever and whenever you challenge folks to leave what's familiar uh, and go to what they don't understand or what they have never seen, a lot of times people get downright ornery. Come on, somebody say amen. Yeah, um, I, I can hear them now. Way to go, Pastor Moses. Jeez, man. At least back in Egypt, we got to suck the, uh, the rib bones and get a little bit of gristle off them after the Egyptians ate. And we got to eat some of the fruit even though they slobbered on it and threw the stuff away. We got to eat the leftovers and we got to drink after them. At least there we got, we, we got something, you know, anything's better than what we have right now here you are pastor Moses told us that God said and now we're out here going to get shot with a spear or a sword or, or we're going to drown thanks pastor thanks a lot I appreciate all your great leadership and I can hear Moses right now say shut up hold my tea and he picks up his staff out in front of the waters and the waters part man People are starving. And Pastor Moses said, Lord, have mercy, God, what is going on? These people want to kill me. They, you, you parted the Red Sea. They've watched the plagues in Egypt. You've delivered them with a strong and mighty hand. And they're wanting to kill me because they're hungry. And they're talking about turning around and going to eat leftovers. They're talking about turning around and going back to what they had. God, what am I going to do now? Can I just say this really quick to every singer, to every teacher, to every life group leader, to every young preacher in this church today, and maybe every person that is watching online, and we have quite an audience that watches online. Can I just say this real quick? People are willing to return to Egypt and eat trash if we don't learn to feed our sheep. Come on, somebody. Hear what I'm fixing to say. This is going to be kind of rough here, but listen, it's time for us to stop downloading the latest and greatest from Stephen Furtick and every other big-name preacher out there. Come on. What is God saying to you for the people that you are responsible for? Come on. It is quiet in here. Are y'all scared this morning? Come on. It is quiet in here. What is God saying to you uh, for the people that you are responsible for? God, these people are ready to kill me for hunger. And God says, okay, fine. You get honey buns and KFC every day for the rest of your lives while you're out here. Everything you can imagine. If you're needing King James, it would be manna and quail every day. Listen, Moses was an awesome leader. Moses was a great guy who stood on God's word. And now here is Joshua after he passed. And God says, Joshua, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. But hear me quickly this morning. Jo Joshua never struck a rock that gave water like Moses did. 
As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I don't read anywhere where Joshua took his rod and struck a rock and water came out of it and everybody drank, including all their livestock. Joshua held his staff out in front of the Jordan River and the river did nothing. Moses just stood in front of the Red Sea and the Red Sea parted. Joshua came to the Jordan, held his stick out, and nothing happened. And if I was Joshua, I'd have been going, "Uh uh-oh. Oh, no. The Bible said Joshua had to get in the water a little ways. And I think he maybe started to really pray and say, Okay, God, I don't know what to do. Listen, Moses stood outside and walked on dry ground. Joshua had to get in the water and get wet before anything happened. Moses never even got his feet wet. Here's my point. What worked for Moses didn't work for Joshua. Mm -hmm. They were the same, but they were different. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will be with you the same way I was with Moses, but you, Joshua, are not Moses. You like it? You, Joshua, are not Moses. Listen to me carefully for just a second. You and I are not who inspired you to do the things that you do today. Maybe one day you were growing up and you heard somebody saying and it inspired you to be uh, to do, use your skill and use your gifts to sing. But I want to tell you something. You are not that person. I have people that I look up to and mentored me in ministry, and i got to tell you something. Some of the people that I have heard over the years, I absolutely love the way they minister, but I am not that person. Listen, Joshua, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. But listen, son, you are not Moses. You are not who inspired you. I am not Al Wooliver, who trained me and ran thousands of people in his churches. I am not Terry Davis, who is a spiritual daddy to me to this day. However, as I was with them, God says, I will be with you. I am not Moses, but God is with me as he was with Moses. You are not Moses, but God is with you as he was with Moses. I'm being a bit redundant, but I want to show you something here. We are the same, but we are different. We must understand our own uniqueness. I'm going to show you something this morning. I'm going to show you why some folks never make it in ministry even though they are called. I'm going to show you why some marriages just kind of flounder and move around but they never are successful. It's because you're trying to be somebody who you are not. Come on, hold on just a minute. I'll get there, okay? We are the same, but we are different. And you have to understand that you have a uniqueness about you. We have an anointing, the Bible said in Ephesians, from the Holy One is what the Bible tells us. And we are different in the way we use our gifts. So we accomplish our God-given responsibility in life because of the uniqueness that we have, not because we try to plagiarize and imitate the people that we look up to. Mm -hmm. Hang on just a second, okay? Amen. Just because something is different doesn't mean God is not in it. Just because something goes differently than the way you think. Bob and I talked about that, yes, uh, Friday. It doesn't mean that God is not in it. I firmly believe half the problem I see in the young ministers today is this. They want to be the next Stephen Furtick. They want to be the next Chris Hodges. The young ladies want to be the next Joyce Myers or whoever their, their heroes are. I struggled with this early in my ministry as well. When I started, Jimmy Swaggart was the big thing, and I wanted to do the <laughs> in the middle of my songs and and be able to lead a choir while I'm singing or preaching. I wanted to be the Rod Parsley after that. And then I wanted to be T.D. Jakes. And then I wanted to be, and I almost got there. I just brown uh, white chocolate right here. But anyways, and then I wanted to be Ron Carpenter. But I noticed I'm not gifted in the same areas that they are. You have to be willing to be the same but different. Come on. Come on, somebody. You have to be willing to be the same but different. Listen, if I can just go off for just a minute in here today, how did they get what they have? How did they get what they have? They laid on their face and sought God for his plan and his purpose for their lives and ministry. Listen to me, Bible teacher. Listen to me, young ministers and singers. Stop trying to be everybody else. Stop downloading the best of everyone else and ask God for some fresh food and fresh 
manna to rain down on the people that God gives you to be responsible for. Pastor, how do I do that? How does that take place? Well, let me say it again. They laid on their face and sought God for his plan and his purpose for their lives and ministry. If you want what they have, you're going to have to do what they did to get what they have. Even though we are not them, we have an anointing from the Father. Come on, somebody. Are you in here today? Yeah, pastor, I'm not sure if I can do that. Listen, if all you're going to do is regurgitate other folks' stuff, then let's just play their videos and you turn in your credentials. Come on, if all you're going to do is regurgitate what everybody else is doing, come on, somebody, let's just play their videos and turn in your credentials until God puts something down inside your sanctified soul to give to the people of God. The world needs fresh bread. Come on, somebody. This city needs fresh bread. Are you in here? Our children need fresh bread. The youth of this church need fresh bread. My God, I need fresh bread. Touch heaven. Get a word. And then give it with fire and passion to God's people. Yeah. As I was with Moses... As I was with Moses, this new earpiece is killing me. As I was with Moses, I'm going to uh, be with you. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. But I'm not going to do with you what I did with Moses. Let me say it again. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. But I'm not going to do with you what I did with Moses. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't need an encore of what somebody else is of what somebody else does god is creative come on somebody say it god is creative uh, and he will give you an original he hasn't run out of ideas hello i need a mentor i am a mentor to several young men but i don't need them to imitate me we are the same but we are different look at your neighbor and tell them just go ahead and be yourself go ahead tell them be yourself what is god saying to you what is God, come on, ask him, what is God saying to you? I'm not asking you what you heard from another preacher and you've copied it and next week you'll hear another one and then God is saying that to you. I'm asking you, what is God saying to you in your prayer time? Ask him, do you have your own jam? Come on, do you have your own jam? Brother Blackshear preached years ago, and I preached the same scriptures that he preached years ago. But listen, we did it differently. I am a new expression of the same scriptures. Come on, somebody, amen. I'm just a new expression of an old idea. If God wanted Joshua to act like Moses, he'd have just kept Moses alive. If God wanted you to be me, he wouldn't need you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, just be yourself. Just be yourself. All right, now, I'm going to dig into this a little bit further. I'm going I'm to show you something here. Boy, I just feel like I want to go on with that a minute and just keep preaching that a second. Um, I told a young minister, I'm the, I am, I'm just going to say for a few minutes. I told a young minister uh, uh, several months ago, he was asking me, how did your church grow and what happened? And I said, well, we're actually not growing right at the moment, just being honest with you. We've actually been in kind of a downslide here lately because we've had a lot of people leave and move away. And I explained to him what was going on. And I said, sometimes God thins out the herd, but he brings in new people. And I said, we're getting a lot of new people, but we're still not back where we used to be. And he said, well, here's what I think the Lord is saying to me. I'm going to do this in my church and this in my church and this in my church. And he spent over a million dollars he was showing me the stuff this last week at lunch. He spent over a million dollars, and he ain't got no more people than he had to begin with. And I told him, can I just tell you, black walls, hello, flashing lights, colored lights, and dancers are not going to attract people to, to Jesus. Come on. It is not going to attract anybody to Jesus until you can stand up and learn to be yourself and quit copying everybody that has come down the line before you. Quit trying to be Highland Church. Quit trying to be Elevation Church. Quit trying to be everybody else what does God have for the city that you serve in you be you you do you and watch God take over watch God's presence move you've got to be you how do you know all that preacher because we tried it and it didn't work uh-huh all right now let me get into this real quick I want to show you how this works okay 
Somebody look at the person next to you and say, the promise of his presence. The promise of his presence. We keep. How do you grow? How do you, how do you make things happen in your life? You keep. We need the promise of his presence. And the way you get the promise of his presence is you have to let go of your idea. You have to let go of your will. Let me explain this to you. Isaiah 43, 19. A lot of folks don't like to hear this, but this is the truth. All right? Thank you for the reminder. It's lunch, and don't preach too long. Somebody literally just texted me. I forgot. I need to shut my online stuff off while I'm preaching. Somebody actually texted me one time while I was preaching and said, you're a jerk. I almost read my notes. Isaiah 43, you're a jerk. Behold, I do an... No. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, all right. Isaiah 43. I just embarrassed you, didn't I? Isaiah 43, verse number 19. Behold, I do a new thing. Come on, I'm talking about you have to let go of your will. You have to let go of your idea. Behold, I do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. But uh, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. I'm going to do a new thing. You don't have to copy everybody else. Come on, somebody say, don't copy. Don't copy. Listen, Joshua 1, verse number 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people to the land which I have given to them, the children of Israel. When I needed Moses, I anointed Moses and used Moses. When I needed, or when I anointed Moses, he was powerful. But listen, Joshua, Moses isn't here anymore. Moses is dead. Stop trying to be Moses. Stop trying to be Moses. The promise of his presence is a unique promise of an old presence. The promise of his presence was a unique promise of his presence. It wasn't something new. It wasn't something, that I, got, I got to move on, I'll tie this all together. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you, but everything else is different. Everything else is different. I'm going to be with you like I was with the person who inspired you, but you're not them. Does that make sense? I'm going to be with you like I was with the person, like I was with Moses, like the person that inspired you because of their anointing. But listen, you won't be them. All right. Several times in chapter 1 of Joshua, God told Joshua things like this. He said, I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. He told them uh, uh, several different times, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. He told them every place that your feet tread upon will be yours. Okay? It sounds very similar. But leaving, uh, 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 when he said leaving or forsake you, I will not leave you or forsake you. This is a very similar thing. But listen, and, and I'm going to talk about marriage for just a second here. Uh, leave means to remove yourself from somebody's presence. But forsaking, however, is something totally different. Forsaking means to emotionally detach yourself. So you can forsake somebody and still not leave them. <laughs> uh, some of y'all will get this. Uh, you can leave somebody, or uh, uh, you can forsake somebody emotionally detached, but not leave them and still be with them. That's the problem with some marriages today, is people have emotionally detached, but you're still roommates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, l l listen, God is telling Joshua, I won't remove myself from your presence. I, I won't emotionally detach myself from you either. I will be there in the tough times. God said, when I get ready to move, I don't leave my ideas and I don't do it halfway. I will not forsake it. Wherever your feet goes is yours. Over and over, the promises of God's presence are reiterated to Joshua. Joshua, you do you, and I I'll be me. That's what God told him over and over. Joshua, you do you, and I'll be me. I love that. Bob, God says, Bob, you do you, and I'll be me. Diana, you do you, and I'll be me. Elaine, you do you, and I'll be me. Tracy, you do you. You be what God wants you to be, and I'll do me. On the mountaintop or in the valley, 
God says, I'll do me. Employed or unemployed, God is saying, I will do me. Listen, coronavirus, cancer, the common cold, whatever, God is saying, I will still do me. People leave you. Opportunity may pass you by. Family and friends may think that you are crazy and walk away and leave you. But I'm telling you, God is saying to you this morning, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. You do you and I'll do me. Yeah, there are some folks in here that you needed to hear this today. Listen, you thought and, and the enemy had you convinced that God left you because of your past. But God has you here today to hear this word. I was with you when you were 18, and I'm still with you when you're 55 right now. I haven't left you. I am still here for you. If you will come back to me and you do you, I will do me in your life. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1 he said in verse number 4 before I formed you in your mother's womb I knew you before you were born I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nation listen I'm beginning to feel the preacher rising up in this place today amen I want to tell you David said I was young and now I am old but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging bread God isn't bipolar God is the epitome of consistency the promise centers around his presence the promise centers around his presence okay are you ready for this I don't know if you are but I'm going to go anyways okay my presence will be with you as I was with Moses so will I be with you my presence will be with you I will not leave you. His presence is the promise that he's telling us he will give. His presence. Somebody say his presence. I'm going to show you something that we have going wrong in the ministry today. His presence is the promise. Not a new car. Come on. Come on. Not a new car. Not a huge mansion. Come on, somebody. Not the winning lottery numbers. Come on. Not the littering, not winning, uh, winning lottery numbers. Not fame. Not uh, petted egos. His presence. His presence. But my presence, God is saying, Joshua, my presence does not exempt you from the process of the wilderness. This is the major problem I see in church today is we equate his presence by what we possess and how good life is going. And if we don't have as much as we want or we don't have what we want or life isn't very smooth, then God's not fair and God ain't good no more. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good except when my life is not going right. Uh-huh. Not understanding his presence is what he promised. I got to say this the right way. Understanding his presence is what he promised, not what you get. Maybe that makes sense. All right, let me let me stop. I'm going to end on this point right here cuz y'all look bored. Joshua, uh, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Joshua, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you the same way. But listen, son, you're not Moses. You know what? I'm going to shut this stupid thing off. I don't like it. It's bugging me. Just go ahead and mute it, Steve. All right. As I was with Moses... So am I going to be with you, Joshua? The problem is you're not Moses, and I don't need you to act like Moses. Moses, Joshua, went through the wilderness, and the reason he isn't leading Israel into the promised land, come on somebody, is because he faced so much frustration, he let it get the best of him, and he got mad and struck a rock out of anger when I told him to speak to the rock. Now, who wants to be Moses? Because I had to put him on the top of Mount Nebo and let him see my promise, but he never got to walk in my promise. 
Come on. Joshua, as I was with him, I'm going to be with you, but you ain't him. He got mad and struck a rock out of anger, and he didn't get to the promised land. I was with him, and I'm going to be with you, but you are not him. And listen, if he went through the wilderness... You're going to have to face your own wilderness. So, Joshua, my presence is with you, but you still have to work the process. You still have to go through your own wilderness experiences. You still have to be trained. You still have to be developed. You still have to be tried. You still have to be tested, mentored, and pruned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, listen. Those occasional wilderness experiences. I need somebody to come to the piano. Those occasional wilderness exp uh, experiences, faith-testing experience, are there to toughen you up. They are there to toughen you. Come on, somebody. Are you in here today? They are there to toughen you where you can stand flat-footed with your shoulders squared and stand against every fiery dart the enemy hurls at you. Okay, now I need to stop and just talk for a minute. It intrigues me to watch tweets and posts of all the infinite wisdom people post and tweet. I have learned the Lord has said it. And then the next week, I'm enjoying my glass of... And then the next day, the Lord has shown me. And then I'm off vacationing with my significant other. But the Lord has shown me you and all your infinite wisdom. If the Lord really spoke to people as much as people say he does, we all ought to be millionaires right now. Either that or God is really stupid and he just doesn't know what he's doing. Because we keep saying the Lord said and nothing's happening. We keep saying the Lord said, but we keep sitting in the same hole we... Hello? Y'all are really quiet this morning. There must be more fear in here than I've ever thought there was. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. It's not about how many likes you get that makes you look good. It is about his presence it's all about his presence the same scriptures brother Blackshear preached and I'm using him because he's former pastor are the same pre uh, scriptures that I preach we just have a different way to express them but the fact of the matter is it all centers around the word and in John 1 and 1 he said in him was the word and the word was with God and the word was God which equivalent, uh, equals his presence there are so many people that want to be parking lot prophets twitter twits and facebook ministers and it's all about the likes and it's not about his presence is it okay for me to say that doesn't really matter I got the microphone I'll do it anyways come on Joshua my presence is with you but you still got to go through the wilderness Moses as I was with him I'm going to be with you, but you're not Moses. But you still have to go through the wilderness. And guess what? As I was with him in that wilderness, I'm going to be with you in your wilderness.
you just talk for a minute? Have you ever had it, Sister Diana, to where as I was with Moses, so will I be with you? And, and uh, I must have took the wrong turn somewhere because this is not what I wanted. This is not what I asked you for. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. And we must be on a different boat, different ship, different country or something because what I'm going through right now, God, this is not what I asked you for. This is not what I was wanting. And God says, but that's what I promised you, my presence. As I was with Moses in the middle of his wilderness, I'm going to be with you and yours. You're not Moses. I'm going to to put you through the process. I'm going to put you through the wilderness, and I'm going to be with you just like I was with him. But listen, son, when I tell you to speak to the rock, speak to it. Don't hit it. (laughs) His presence was not promised so you'd never have to go through anything. His presence was promised so that when you do go through something like the Red Sea, like people speaking of stoning you, like a lack of food, I'm there. He didn't rescue Jonah from the fish. He was in the fish. He didn't rescue Daniel from the lion's den. He was in the lion's den. He didn't take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace, but the king looked over the side of the balcony and said, didn't we throw in three? I see four and the fourth, and they're loosed, and they're walking around, and that fourth one has the image of somebody with a bright light in the middle of the fire. He didn't rescue them from the fire. He rescued them in the fire. You see, he promised, I will be with you like I was with them. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you, but you have to be realistic and understand you're going to go through desert. It happens. So here's what you need to do today. You need to adjust your blouse. You need to adjust your suit, your jean jacket. Right there. Yes, sir. Adjust your glasses up. Do your hair back like this, ladies. I'm in good company. The Hebrew boys was in the fire. I'm in there, too. Yeah, I read a story that they was running around in the fire, and everybody said nothing burned, but my Bible said something burned, and it was the bondage that they were in. They were loosed when they were... They were in the fire. Guess what, Mikey? I'm in the fire too. <laughs> yeah, amen. Uh, 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 he didn't save uh, Noah from the flood, but he put him in an ark, and the ark rescued him because he was in the ark. Yeah, that's right. It rains on the just and the unjust. That's right. It floods here. It floods over there. And guess what? He saved me through the flood. Amen. I I may have to go into the lion's den. I may have to face some trouble. But guess what? Daniel made it. Come on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made it. Jonah made it. Come on. Lot made it. Abraham made it. Uh, Come on, somebody. He was with Mary in her virgin womb. They made it. I can make it. Why? Because of his presence. I can sit next to you in my presence. Isn't going to do a whole lot for you, but I am sweating really hard right now. Beads of coronavirus are coming off me. I could sit next to you and my presence isn't going to do anything other than maybe get you a little bit wet right now. You can be going through the darkest trial of your life and even your mentor, Pastor Bob, know nothing about it. And Bob can be with you and I can be with you and your brothers can be with you. And that don't do anything except let us know that we're not alone. But listen, when you understand 
It's all about his presence. I may be going through it, but I'd rather go through it with him than go through it without him. young man walk up to me yesterday at a funeral. Everybody was pretty well gone and he had tears rolling down his face and he said, I haven't been a very good person for a long time. I said, it's all right. I said, his presence is still with you. How can you, this is what he said, how can you say that, Pastor John? because you're standing in front of me right now with tears dripping off your chin. And if his presence wasn't with you, you wouldn't be bothered. His presence is still there. I'm not telling you he's condoning it, what you do, but I'm telling you his presence is still there and he wants you to come. Pastor, I may come to church here soon. I, I, listen, I don't care if you come to church here, you go to church somewhere else. But you need to fellowship with the body of believers. And if you prayed with me when I preached today, I told him, then you're saved. Every angel in heaven's rejoicing. I need to quit. I'm just going to keep preaching. Lord, it's already 12:15. Some of y'all going to get sick. You didn't take your medicine at 12. Hallelujah. Come on, stand with me if you will. a song I heard growing up and I wrote the title down and I don't even know if I remember all the words and my voice is pretty well gone right now but this song I heard when I was a kid and it says thank you for every hill that I climb for every time the sun don't shine thank you Lord for every lonely night I pray until I knew everything was all right. I thank you for the valleys that I walk through today. Listen, thank you for every hill that I climb, for every time the sun don't shine. Thank you, Lord, for every lonely night. I prayed until I knew everything was all right. I thank you for the valleys that I walk through today. God's not mad at you. Doesn't mean because you're going through a wilderness that you're out of his will. It just means as I was with Moses in his wilderness, I'm going to be with you in yours. Everything that Moses went through, you're probably going to go through. We get these big misconceptions. We got Charleston Heston with a big old barrel chest and a rod that looked like a machine gun. Let God's people go! Listen, Moses was 120 years old when he did that. He probably had no teeth. And he probably had a cane. Let God's people go! And that's why Pharaoh was laughing at him. Are you kidding me? Father God, I did everything you told me to do, and I ministered to the best of my ability today. And I ask you, God, that you would touch your people for the next couple minutes in here. In Jesus' name. They told us not to give altar calls, to not lay hands on anybody. That was one of the things. Leave the doors open. Don't pass offering plates because they didn't want people to do that. Don't have communion and have people in the plates. And they said, don't have altar calls. I listen real well. 
If you're in here today and you say, you know what, Pastor? I think I understand that scripture now. It's his presence. It's all about his presence. As I was with him, Moses, I'll be with you. It's about his presence. It's not that I'm Moses. It's that you're going to be with me through everything Moses faced. I have my own wilderness, and you're going to be with me, and the enemy's been beating me up because I've been going through the wilderness, but I understand today that you're with me. You're with me in the middle of what I'm going through. If you're in here today, would you just wave at me? If that's you, come on, would you just wave at me? God bless you. I see a few hands up. I will listen. I'm not going to ask you to grab the person's hand next to you, but here's what I ask you to do. I want to ask you to just lift up hands all through this church. There were five or six people had their hands up. Said, that's me. I've been there. And there were a whole lot more that wanted to. They just didn't. Would you just begin to worship the Lord and tell him, Father, would you touch everyone around me? Come on, just touch the person next to me, Lord. Maybe you just want to go over and whisper in their ear. Maybe the Lord is telling you something to tell them. Maybe you have got a word to give to somebody. I want you to just take a minute and obey the Lord. Come on. Just take a minute. Feel free. Use your gift. Come on. If the Lord's leading you to somebody. God's with you. God's with you. God's with you. He hasn't forgotten you. Did you look at the person next to you? Not as a joke, but very serious. You just look at him and tell him, God's with you. You do you, he'll do him. You do you, he'll do him. God's got you. God's got you. God's got you. Wilderness isn't punishment, it's just part of the process. tell you something that I have understood here over the last several months is that all the things I went through prior have got me to the place I'm at right now where the things that come to me now don't bother me like they used to. I look back now and go, God, you took me from over there to here. Man, I used to fall apart over that. But what I went through over there, you were with me. And now I'm facing it here again with a different face and a different name and you're still with me and I got this thing I got it I do me you do you I'm not trying to be you Tracy I can't be you I am way too pretty I'm just teasing with you anyhow I, I, I can't do you I have to do me and you know what everything I learned last time I, I'm right now. I got this thing figured out. I do me. God does him. And this is getting easier when I go. But I am facing some things that I've never faced before. And I know it's part of the process. And I'm going to look back at this in a year and go, I understand now. You understand? Anybody got it? I love y'all. I really wish we could have altar time. I love y'all. And I hope you have the best week of your life. I hope you stay home and watch Netflix with your kids. <laughs> I, I hope that you have a wonderful spring break. I want you to know we love you. If something happens around here, we will send out one calls. We will let you know what we have to do. But I'm anticipating God turning some things around today. Amen. Come on, shake somebody's hand. Tell, well, actually, don't. Do the leg bump. Do whatever you want to do. God bless you.